uh, MGM, Hanna-Barbera, and Disney. And on the basketball team for Hanna-Barbera was Jerry Eisenberg was our center. No, I wasn't. I was like a, a guard. Yeah. How could you forget it? Well, Bill Joyce was the center. Bill Joyce was the center, right. And uh, we were on, uh, Columbia had uh, Johnny Mathis on their team, and uh, Jack Halverson was on the MGM team? I don't remember, but stage five had, uh, you know, the, it was sponsored by Ozzy and Harriet. That was their stage. Oh, right. Of course, Ricky and David Nelson were on the show, on the team. Yeah. And the girls, oh, they used to pack that. The gym, whatever Disney had the best team. They won all the time, and Hanna Barbera was at the bottom. That's because that's because you had limited animation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. You know, it was a good. Uh, uh, I was, and watching that voice panel, it, it brought up a memory of when uh, yeah. I first went to a recording session. Alan Dinehart took me over to a, a recording studio over at Columbia, where they did it at the time. And it was a Flintstone recording, and I had, I had no idea how this had ever been done. And it was just the four actors and Joe, and it was hilarious. It was not just the script, but the way they would keep topping each other with jokes and humor. It, I was cracking up in the booth. And I imagine it's a lot different now. It was just a few people, an engineer, the actors, and the director, Alan Dinehart, behind in the booth, and that was it. So I imagine it's quite different now. You know, you know when the uh, voice actors talked about Jonathan Winters, he was at the studio one time uh, doing, a, they were doing a documentary, and he'd come out at 10.30 every morning and do 45 minutes for us at the lunch truck. <laughs> oh. Well, you so, remember, well, remember when I was working there, I guess you, we, I was, I, you weren't there at the time, because you went over to Ruby Spirit. I had the the best office. They gave me an office that was terrific, and we used to, all the writers used to gather in there and plot against management. And when Jonathan Winters was doing the Smurfs, he'd come out of the session and he'd come to my office because he knew he could always find an audience there. And he'd walk in, and I'd say, "Are you here to fix the plumbing?" And he'd say, "Yes," and he would do 20 minutes as a plumber. And it was amazing. He just, and he, it was one of the times that the studio was fun. I mean, the studio wasn't as much fun oh, as yeah. days. They had, they had gotten these modular walls in there, so if they fired you, your office disappeared. They would just have to move the, all the walls around. And literally, you couldn't find your, where your office had been. It was gone. It was now part of the part of look the waiting room. Look in the hallway for your furniture. Yeah. And, uh, and then when I remember, when, and I shared the top of the office for a while with Tex Avery, oh, who would yeah. come in there to work there, and he was, was like, he was startled. And, he said, they just keep grabbing the work away from you. You finish something and they grab it away, you never see it again. And, uh, anyway, um, uh, we talked a little about the Jetsons. I really liked Top Cat. It was one of my favorite shows when I was a kid. Uh, I really loved that show. And they still, had, they still hold up really well. They're still good, they're good, still good shows. It was a good show. Um, uh, Tony, I believe you, you wrote, you started uh, Secret Squirrel. Right? Yeah. 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 Tell us how Secret Squirrel came about. Well, it was an obvious parody of the James Bond craze that was going on then. It was a simple little script. Now, uh, with a show like that, would you have the voice in mind when you when you designed the character when you wrote the No. Thing? No, I generally uh, I had nothing to do with voices, but the actors would have a lot to do with how I would write. I, I got to know what to Oz did and he could, uh, what voice, he just knew him so well, he could write to his abilities and uh, to a lesser extent other actors, but it was, uh, everything was sort of derivative, voices, scripts, stories, all like old, like uh, Flintstones were the Honeymooners, Top Cat was Bill Go. Uh, uh, Joe, he liked to copy. But a good copy is better than a lousy original. <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked Mark about uh, Garfield. I didn't know Mark until about a year ago. I, and I, I, he mentioned that he had been. I said, "You were Hanna Barbera." This is after I'd been fired, which I actually was. I, Joe, Bill, Bill hired me, and Joe fired me. It was kind of a nice book ending for my career. <laughs> but. Um, 
Uh, oh, yeah. You, you, I was asking you about your director Garfield. Yeah. And you mentioned that you you wrote for the characters, and so that they came in and they were playing themselves, and you had written for them. And uh, it's an interesting. He he has a, an approach of let them do what they do. They're going to bring the story to life. And I've always had shows like Transformers, where it has many 16, uh, on one show he had 18, 18 actors. And actors basically would rather not be directed. I don't mean that they, they, they need direction, they need the story direction, but they'd rather be allowed to do the characters without a lot of, a lot of uh, critiquing. And uh, when I had a large cast like that, I'd, uh, Tim Cummings, you probably have heard of him many times. He's uh, uh, in uh, Disney's uh, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, thank. You. He plays Pooh, doesn't he? Yes. What what happens, happens when you don't remember names? You forget. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, Miss Cummings said, "Wally, this is a, a Transformer show." He said, "You're not letting me create a character," and. I wanted to, but I didn't quite come back with this. I said, we haven't time to discuss character. You're going to do it my way, and that's the way it's going to be done. I didn't do that, but that was basically, I said, I don't have time to, to discuss character. In, in, uh, on stage, you do that. You work with an actor. Would you rather come through, do your line off screen or, or, or on stage or off, off stage? Um, in movies, um, or rather TV shows, you kind of have to speed that and, and hit your marks and do what the director wants to do in order to get it done. Movies, you have a chance to sit around and talk about character. It's interesting, in a cartoon show, you get four hours to do 125 lines of dialogue and really not much time to talk about how you feel about this character. <laughs> and the director's job is, in, in my view, with a large cast like that, is to say, this is how the character's going to be. He's going to be gruff, or he's going to be... Uh, uh, everybody knows who uh, Optimus Prime is, I think, the lead in Transformers. Uh, <coughs> I just remember the audition for this. Peter Cullen came in, and I was kind of pushing him to be kind of a gruff, tough son of a bitch. And he said, Wally, I got 30 promos to do this afternoon for NBC. You're ripping my throat. So I said, well, what if we backed off and just made him cool, just made him smooth. He didn't get angry, never yelled at anybody. He said, boy, that works for me. And he's been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I would like